Think of this in terms of um, the way we are creating content that we're putting in front of people. The way we're encouraging people to have a relationship with us is by giving them different pieces of content, by telling them a story. And the one little continuity error in our content is going to destroy the whole story. Yeah. <clears throat> we have a, an executive I, I'm presenting later, and I, I presented a, a journey map to, to him. And, and uh, there are five stages in this journey. They're really more buckets of, of tasks than actual steps in a process, as I explained it to him. And he said, you know, that's great, but my journey only has three steps. I get people to the purchase in three steps. And we're a large B2B company, and our sales cycle is 18 months or something. And of course, they need more than three steps to do their due diligence to get, actually get the purchase uh, to that phase. And it's, and it's very complex. And so somehow I had to explain to him that, first of all, it's not our journey that we're pushing people through, like shepherds pushing sheep through a, a gate. Uh, or fence or something, and it's their journey, it's the user's journey. It's not our story, really, it's their story. They're piecing it together as they go. And if you have missing chunks in that story, they have these continuity problems. Exactly. So we're going to talk more about that, but consistency is a huge part of doing well. Um, a lot of analysts are now picking this up. Um, the, the, the idea of uh, just being consistent in the way that you communicate is so much more of the story than an individual piece of, of delight. So there's a lot of talk about home run content or you know, creating uh, a huge effect with one piece of content. Um, and I think that th that idea is starting to die out a little bit. People are realizing that doing well consistently is so much more important than doing fantastically once. Can I, can I talk about the Bob Dylan story? You could a little okay. bit, but I will cut All you right. off halfway through. When okay. Get All right. So, uh, a couple of years ago, as you might remember, we did a commercial with Bob Dylan and Watson. And Watson analyzed all of Bob Dylan's songs <clears throat> and came up with a theme, a one-sentence theme of, of what they were about, and love and loss, I think. And, uh, <clears throat> and he said, that sounds about right. All he really said in this whole 30-minute uh, or 30-second clip was, that sounds about right. And otherwise, he was just sitting there uh, in front of some books or something. And, uh, and we, we launched it in, in September. And the way that the contracts with, with celebrities work, um, they're annual. So in January, all of a sudden, the contract ran out, and we couldn't have any of that content on our site anymore. And there, there were so many hooks and levers into this one home run piece that it actually was a fair amount of work to expunge our site. And we're still dealing with that, actually, because a lot of our AI scrapes massive quantities of data and Wikipedia, DBpedia and stuff to try to understand what our audience needs. And there's all this noise about, I don't know, the times they are a-changing and whatever out there, all of his song titles, because Bob Dylan was associated with IBM at one point in time, one home run content. And so, it, 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 like, from an AI perspective, it, it just kind of gummed everything up. It was a very powerful piece, and you know, we won awards for it and stuff, but it didn't really have the impact that we hoped it would. <clears throat> So companies are realizing they need to get better at three key things. And um, the first one is delivering an outstanding user experience. I think uh, in terms of people are, people are expecting this. Um, they're expecting um, for us to be able to be telling a great brand story. So they want, uh, we had this from, from Robert Rose uh, talking about creating a connection. Um, an emotional connection. There's a story that you're trying to tell, right? Right, right. The, the, it's not just about you know clicks and, and, and data streams, but it's about how do you get emotional intelligence built into your, into your stories? How do you build stories that are going to actually connect emotionally with the, with the audience? And the third part of this is, and James has touched on this already, is offering a, a really good customer experience. How do we tell, how do we uh, you know, take the customer on their journey uh, as we walk through it. So we're going to talk about these three things individually. Um, the, the user experience is, is something that has increasingly uh, been seen as a design issue in a lot of companies. And um, you know, there's an increasing awareness that it's not just about design, that in fact content is driving a whole, uh, uh, um, a whole 
actually more of that process than, than just the design. And there's an increasing awareness, this is from, uh, from Jonathan Coleman at, at Facebook, an understanding that actually these two things are, 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 cannot be separated. Um, unfortunately, they often are, right? Yeah, well, right. The, you know, the whole issue of having a wireframe full of lorem ipsum and then just trying to fill it with content, that just doesn't work. Um, and really, uh, the, other, the other side of the coin, like thinking of it just in terms of the words, like in search, in SEO, we all, always thought, well, all it is is about words, right? So just construct the words on the page correctly and you'll get ranked. But actually, the, the most important factor is design. When people land on that experience, what do they see? How, do they, how can they scan it for relevance? And so design and, con and content have to work together. They have to be actually the same team, the, the members of the same team. And we've seen a lot of organizations who've started to, to bust that particular, those particular silos, bring them together in the sense that they have organizationally brought together design and content teams around the user experience to, to, to actually force them to sit in a room and have conversations about how that works. And, um, you know, PayPal's been, I think, been one of the leader, leading kind of uh, innovators around this, where they've actually put the two organizations together and said, this is not two separate conversations. This is not two processes. Um, content and design have to be uh, in the same place. Yeah, we're undergoing the biggest change since I've been at IBM. We're moving to these centers, six centers, of uh, where diamond teams, where they have a designer and a content person and a, a digital strategist and, and, a, and a performance marketer and maybe an analyst around the same table working in Scrum every day. And so all of those teams, of one for every offering, are going to sit together and, and, and design the experience together. It's really cool. So user experience, and what, you know, there's obviously a whole bunch uh, of different touch points on this, but it's really, uh, we see innovation around this is the only way uh, of, of connecting that up, and the only way of giving you a chance of getting the, giving the customer a, a, a consistent experience. In terms of brand experience, you know, the brands are built on, on, on great stories. And, and as we said, having a relationship is more important than ever. But um, you know, th th this is something that I think is really th an awareness that telling, doing this well is driving the business, right? It's, and it, it goes right across the, uh, the, the spectrum as well. Yeah, it's, it's probably the last piece of the puzzle of, of content marketing, I think, that, that we're trying to do. But you know, like in the early stages, I think it's, the easy part is the is the quantitative data, but it gets very qualitative when you get to this point. And there's lots, there's, there is lots of data on, on how the, the brand image uh, is attributed to, to, to what it says and how it says it and the value of that. A lot of people have, have um, Gartner has got some great, uh, great data on um, how companies that are doing this well are, are, um, uh, are, are actually performing better as companies. Um, I think, um, the last point that we wanted to get to was this idea of uh, the, the importance around the customer experience. So if, if you like, the user experience is, is, a very, is a very detailed kind of engineering producty kind of thing. The brand experience is at a very high level. Customer experience is where m most of it kind of happens, right? That's the, where people are looking at their journeys and they're looking at the, um, uh, what, does the, what is the customer doing? Um, you've done a lot of modeling of the journey and a lot of, uh, collected a lot of data on what's actually happening as your customers and your market interacts with you, right? Yeah, the more we know about our customers and, uh, and can track them uh, in a, in a non-invasive way and understand you know, where are their bottlenecks and where are they taking non-linear journeys and, and how do we tune the journey to, their, to, to the actual experiences they're having instead of you know, insisting on, on a journey that is preconceived and something that we thought might work for them. So some important, you know, there's, there's a lot of data now also people are starting to see about how people uh, respond to this. Much as we like to have a relationship and we want to, uh, uh, we, we want, the brand wants to, have, wants to have everyone love them and be their friends, people are actually extremely fickle. And one bad experience with your company can cause, can cause you to, can cause your audience to just drift elsewhere, go somewhere else. Um, and the companies that do this well consistently, as we can see on the right there, are, are, have been shown to actually you know, be consistently better performing in the business. So this is not something that's um, 
nice to have or something that would be good if we could do better uh, because we'd then feel better about ourselves. It's not something that keeps our customers happy in some random way. It's actually driving the business. And of course, one of the key points about this is that um, this customer experience, I'm going to go a little bit just to get to the, a little bit faster, is all of these experiences at scale, when you talk about how large companies are doing this, all of these experiences are driven by content. The hardest part about the scaling is that you have a, a large number, and in our case, you know, 10,000 marketers. They're all competing for the limited time and attention of the same audience or very similar audiences. And so how do you govern the, the content in a way that you're not just building more and more of the same stuff un unwittingly because you, you're not collaborating? And, um, you know, so, so great content, consistent great content is, is, is the way in which you can project these experiences, do a good job at these experiences on all of these levels. Um, the problem really is that although we are, there's, a, there's a lot of understanding that great content drives these experiences, I think everyone would, would kind of be nodding at that, that you know, what we need to do a better job is great content. The problem is that this great content doesn't just happen. In any organization, there's a lot of talk about, you know, I, I, I'm running this new campaign, so I have these assets. And it's a little bit, little bit like the, the Tom Cruise thing. We're looking at ourselves and going, how did that happen? Where did those assets come from? Um, they, don't just, they don't just magic up. Somebody needs to write them. Someone needs to create them. And perhaps planning is a good point as well as we think about this. How do you start that process? Well, the biggest thing is uh, we, we, the marketing has been so campaign focused that they think about we're going to build this for this event and you know, they, they focus on that as though they're producing a magazine that when it's done, it's you know, forget about it and move on to the next thing. Instead of seeing it as a holistic process that you build something that's evergreen and you continu continually improve it and you fill gaps in that planning process um, for the customer and not for some short-term campaign that is driven by marketing goals. But you're also, you're a, you're at IBM, you're also planning content in quite a structured way. So you're, uh, as, as, the, as a, the need for a piece of content emerges, that's also a process that, that you're, 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 you're making very explicit, right? Yeah, we make a, so we use search to understand what is the most important content we need to build in this evergreen way. And then we have a, a, a tool called Marketer Workspace that sucks the search data in and helps marketers understand across the whole organization what is already in play, what's already been built, and what needs to be built to fill gaps to string together a, a, an elegant customer experience. And you've come up with some interesting insights, I think, on, on the need. So there's a lot of, um, when people are thinking about the content that they need, uh, especially as what do I need for a particular vertical or a particular persona, I know you have hundreds of personas, um, uh, but you've, you've, you've gained some interesting insight from the data on what exactly we should be, you know, what exactly does our, do, do the audiences look like? Yeah, I mean, so the hard part, the easy part for us, because we're geeks, is that we can, you know, we can segment stuff a hundred different ways, but the hard part is making it accessible to marketers in a way that they understand it. So for us, the best way to bucket the audience is between specialists who are sort of the nerds and, uh, and business people. And um, they have different ways of, of using search. They have different ways of, of uh, traversing their journeys. And they all often have to work together in cohorts to, to ultimately make these, these big uh, enterprise buying decisions that they have to make for IBM. So I think simplifying it for the marketer is the, is the real uh, secret sauce. And of course, those different audiences reflect then different language, different stories that you're telling, and different ways of telling those stories, right? Exactly. Like, uh, you know, everybody says in tech com, you never use any sort of hyperbole or, or um, you know, any kind of marketing spin, right? Um, you can get away with a little bit of that for the business audience. So as we think about these customer journeys and all the content that you need, instead of this structured process, as you think about all those different steps in the, in, in the process, there's a danger that you're going to, uh, James pointed out, this looks like way too much fun, in fact. <laughs> yeah, um, silos are not this much fun, for sure, <laughs> for, our, for our customers. But the, the problem is really that all of these different content pieces, all of these different steps in the journey are being created by different teams. They're different parts of the organization that maybe have completely different definitions of what success means, right? 
Right, not just success, but they have, like unless you codify your understanding of what the target audience is so that they all can see it and understand it and build for that audience, then they all have different uh, conceptions of what the different audiences are and, and, and then the whole idea of building duplicate content and, and all the things that happen from siloed uh, content um, workflow come about. So what we're trying to do is think about a customer journey that in reality, as James said at the top, um, this is not something that we control. This is not a beautifully managed funnel. Erin Provey has this wonderful picture of the customer journey uh, that really looks like this. Um, and you can think of content's role here is then not to guide you through this wonderfully circular or wonderfully uh, um, funnel-shaped journey, but a journey that looks more like this, where the blue dots are pieces of content that will give you inflection points in that journey and help the customer drift towards the right place. Right. You know, it, the same design points that we would use in navigation systems work here. Like, give them maps. Help them understand where they are. Help them move back. Do nonlinear trips if ne they need to. Take shortcuts. But always present it as the, this is the journey that we understand that you need to take. 